Hi everyone, nice to see uh, all of you here connecting to our Argos community call. The one before the last <laughs> for this year. And uh, this time we wanted to present to you something that is going to um, be introduced uh, in Argos. It's uh, something that um, the technical team has been working on uh, based on our feedback. Um, well, your feedback. Um, and we have given this, like say functionality, the title of blueprint, because this is what it does. It, it creates, let's say a blueprint uh, for um, uh, how you want to use Argos uh, in the context that you want to create your DMPs or software management plans or other outcomes management plans. And Without further ado, let me um, share my screen to see what we have today and get familiar um, with what we have today and what are the points that this blueprint uh, addresses uh, so that I show you then what changes and an example actually to, to see it in practice, how it will work. Um, Please feel free to unmute. You know, this is uh, not me presenting. This is everyone you know, getting together and seeing something, um, wanting to discuss uh, particular uh, things uh, based on um, our topics and what we, you know, how like our, our experience and our ideas. Uh, right, let me change my screen. Perfect. Can you see my screen? Yes. You cannot see the panels or you can see them because I also have the panels of the Zoom meeting. Uh, no, we can see just uh, uh, Argus Data Management Plan, the website uh, in the home page. Perfect, perfect. Great. Then uh, this is what we have today, right? Uh, Argos was designed initially to support the community of Opener, since it is an Opener service. An Opener, um, uh, primarily, uh, let's say, uh, not primarily, but traditionally, um, has been supporting uh, the European Commission, which is a funder, uh, and other national funders into um, uh, their uh, open access and open science um, journey. And and this is why the Argos service uh, was centered around that. And you can see that this is very evident when you click start new DMP and start wizard. Uh, one of the things that you are called to um, describe is the funding information. And this is something uh, that we had exactly as I explained because of the um, because of that prerequisite. Uh, but it's very good that many, many uh, institutions have started introducing DMPs in their policies and their data management policies. So now we have a growing demand uh, of DMPs uh, to be uh, created that do not only serve funders. This is very great. Um, but how do you do that? How do you bypass this, for example, um, finding information that you see in Argos? So far, you couldn't, right? And um, we had many feedback from um, you uh, indicating that this should uh, change. Uh, some of you wanted, like, you know, more um, personalized uh, things here. So we tried to, we gathered all this feedback and we uh, found a solution that um, could benefit, like could could be uh, of benefit for uh, different uh, cases, uh, different use cases. Let's say. And what we did is created introducing um, a new concept, the concept the concept of blueprints, which gives you the flexibility, let's say, to create your own. Um, structure of the DMP. Not only the template, the template 
related to the content. So the content uh, is as you know, as you um, were used to creating the, the template with the questions and the different sections and the descriptions and everything. But what you are now able to change as well is this. Uh, and you can do that by being administrators of the tool, not as a simple user uh, that logs into Argos. And what you can do is, for example, if you don't want funding information, you can bypass it. And if you uh, want to add more um, sections here where all the main information of the DMP, like the title, the description, uh, the people uh, that worked uh, on that. If you want more information than what we have, you can still um, change it. You can shape it as you want. Uh, how to do that is by, um, now let me change the tab to show you how you can do that. So um, you can now use the blueprint to do that. And you can see now on the left hand side of my panel, there is a new, there are some new, like, let's say, things, the new functionalities. Uh, one of them is blueprints. I click the blueprint. And uh, I can see the collection of blueprints that I have. Uh, let's say that I want to create a blueprint for uh, an institution. I click create. I add the name of this blueprint, for example, um, let's say Athena Research Center, which is my institution. Blueprint, okay, let's say blueprint. Or I can, this, it's up to you what, how you want to call it. And now I can start shaping it adding some sections. For example, uh, I still want to be able to have a title, a description. So let's say that I also want the main information that, that are the metadata of my uh, DMP. And I can add a description to this section to provide more details on, on what this section is about. And I can select uh, from the system fields, there's a drop down here, system fields. I can select um, what I want to use from what I we saw before. These are some system fields that you can uh, now, instead of uh, having them um, statically there uh, and cannot change it, you can now take them and use them where you want inside the blueprint. So these static fields are title, description, as we saw before, researchers, organizations, language of the DMP, contact uh, for the DMP funder, grant and project, license and access rights. So now let's say that I want to create my main, uh, let's say the first section, which is the main information with the title, the description, the researchers um, and their organizations, the language, the contact, I still want them, but I don't want the funder because this is, let's say, an institutional, in, it's not the Horizon Europe, for example. It's something uh, very internal. Um, and I can also, uh, yeah, let, let, let's say that I want this title description. Shows. I can give it a label. Instead of title, title I could give it a name. I can, you know, label them as I, as I want. Description, for example, for description researchers could be affiliates, for example, if I want now to change how the, the, the name appears instead of researchers, organizations, same, I can change it. Uh, language, uh, I can give it a, another label and contact uh, person, for example. And so every system field should have a label because this is what will be available to um, the users when they will select the blueprint and start adding their input. And we will see how this will look like in a minute. We can have a placeholder uh, for, the for the text that will, um, for the, let's say, field that will open uh, so that it provides, let's say, a guidance 
to what input should be um, completed. And similarly, a description uh, of what this um, field is about. So this should this will go. The label is the title of the field, and the description is you know below the title, uh, providing some guidance. Uh, as you can see, you can select uh, if you want to have these uh, fields as required or not, and you can also uh, while you. You, if you want to delete something, for example, if I made a mistake here, I can delete it from here, or the whole section, you can delete it from um, there where the delete button, uh, and the delete icon, sorry, appears. Okay, let's say that I'm, uh, I'm ready with my main information section, and I want to continue with my next one. And my next section, I want it to be about the license of the BMP. So I give it this name. I, I can add a description if I want, but I'm not doing this now in the interest of time. And I see that all the diff all the other um, all the other fields that I used I cannot use again, uh, and that's because these are for uh, it's these are for the metadata of the DNP, and they appear only once. Uh, I said that this is an institutional DMP, so I don't want funder grant, but maybe I want, for example, um, the license and the access rights for the DMP. Same thing, I give the my field a name by using the label. So now I'm using the same name. And I can uh, use a, uh, I can add a placeholder text or a description to specify the input that I want there. And then again, I can uh, make them required or not. Um, to, I forgot to say here that let's say that my main information, since I don't have a funder, I want to indicate the project that I'm working on. Now I have the title, the description, but I have nothing. Of course, the description can have information about the project that I may be working on, but maybe I also need, um, I, I also want a different field that uh, specifies uh, the name of the project. I can do that by clicking project. Let's say name is project. Oops. And now, um, I have another field added in my first section, but I don't want it to be here. I don't want it to be at the end. I want it to be, let's say, uh, after description. So I take it, grabbing it from the three, um, from the bullets, and I'm placing it where it should, where, where I want, uh, where I think it should be. Uh, so now we have a title description project, the research this organization language code, but I'm fine with that. I'm happy with how it's ordered, let's say. The lessons in the other section, I'm also happy with how it looks like. And let's say that now I want to create something about uh, the strategy, for example, right? Something new that we don't have as we saw before today. Maybe I want to have a section that talks about the strategy of the institution, maybe, or the project. I can give my description and I can use this add extra field button. And when I use this, um, this again, some fields with a label, with a placeholder and description appear, but now they're not fixed as before, but they uh, are open for me to use them as I want. For now, we, are, we, we have only the, those four um, options. So these are text, rich text, date, text, rich text, uh, date and number. But we are planning to have an upload. So for for uh, the cases where you want to upload a logo, for example, and other um, options here. Let's say that I want a rich text. The rich text is com comes uh, with both those fields in Argos come with uh, the editor on top. So you can create, you can use them and you can uh, modify the text, uh, create bullets, add hyperlinks, and so on. 
So I click read text and I want this read text to be, for example, about the policy. And I can give a description um, for this policy. Please provide the link or, or the, the details of your policy, right? I can have another extra field. I can have as many as I want. Again, let's say I read text area so that I give the end users the opportunity to add uh, and describe their policy, maybe their project activities that's, that support those po this policy. See, details. Um, and I can, again, uh, provide them with a description. Please provide more details of how your activities. Uh, oops. Relate to the policy, for example. And let's say I'm fine with that. Uh, I have the, the data, so title, description, everything, the project name, the license this policy and the project activities. And then I want more, um, uh, I want a section which should be about the data management. Because now I want to know how the data have been handled uh, in the context of um, the project that this user is describing, right? And I give, I give my section data management I can give a description again, but I'm not going to do that now in the, in the interest of time. And then I can choose the template that I want uh, or the templates that I want the users to be able to, to use interchangeably with uh, the data sets that they have. So those templates might be generic, like the, you know, an institutional template or they might be domain specific, uh, like um, some communities have uh, introduced domain specific templates. So I can add here as many templates as I want, because these these are what they uh, those that they will use, the users will use when I'm uh, going to publish this blueprint. Um, oops. Let's say that I want data set. And this is a test instance that I'm um, now using. So sorry about that. Data management template for testing. This is great. OK, so this uh, template, for example, is for data management. So it has questions and instructions and um, everything um, catering catered to data. But let's say that I don't want only data. I want also to describe software. Uh, you could do that even today in Argos, but now we're, you know, we can shape the blueprint in a better way so that it's more um, prominent where software information is. Uh, I can create another section, calling it software management, oops, without typos. Add in description and then maybe selecting some software templates that I have. And I have one, for example, it's from the Elixir community, the software management template. And let's say that I also want the Software Sustainability uh, Institute template. So that because there are different, you know, di different approaches, similar, but, you know, diff with differences and they have different questions. So maybe I want to add here both. So give users the possibility to choose its time, which one they want to um, use to describe software. And I think that's it, I'm fine. Uh, I gave them the opportunity to um, add data, software, the strategy, and all the metadata that we need um, for the DMP itself. So I'm going to save it. I can now see it in under the DMP Blueprints collection. Uh, when it's in draft, of course, uh, those of you who are uh, template editors or admins in Argos know that when it's in draft, it's not available uh, to the researchers. But if I finalize it, 
it will become available. So let's use it now. Let's see what we created. Let's go to form and click start new DMP, start wizard. Now I'm asked, as you saw, the page changed because the only thing that we want now uh, every time is the title and the description and the rest changes. So the title can be DMP for Athena Research Center, for example. Project. The description can be description. And then I can select my blueprint. Or I could actually use a default blueprint that we have here. But we uh, created it, so I'm going to use this next. And now I see how this blueprint is shaped. Uh, it starts with the title, the description, which you see are pre-filled because I added this information before. It has affiliates that I can uh, write, uh, organizations, license of DMP. Again, same, I can, I can add it. Um, it has a third section is the strategy of the institution. There is text area that we added that they um, describe the policy and also make this a hyperlink, for example, to um, point to the specific reference, the resource uh, as a reference and so on. Uh, same for the projectivities. Uh, for example, we can detail Project activities here. Again, make this, for example, um, a list or use the header to give it a, a more, uh, let's say, to make it more readable and so on. And then um, after I have added the input here, I can go to the fourth section, which is about data management. I see. Um, the templates that can be used here. And I can start adding my content uh, relevant to the data management um, templates that I have in my blueprint. So same here, as you, as you know before, manually or pre-filling um, the information about the, these questions on the template. So let's say pre-fill. And I pre-fill like a data set. This is this uh, field calls the opener graph. So you can search all the data sets that are available at explore.opener.eu, which are not only from Zenodo, but from different data repositories, uh, also available at V3 Data. Let's say that this is the data set that I want. And I'm prefilling it. And now I can see, as I would do before normally, go through the different sections of this template. There's about the data management and um, answer the questions as I would normally do. Save it, for example, and then go back. Oh, I didn't wait. And then go back to... Um, add some descriptions about a software, for example. I can add a description for the software. Maybe I don't want to refill this. Uh, I give a title to my uh, description software for Argus, for it. And I'm, I can choose which template suits me better at this time. Let's say the SSI is what I want to describe this particular uh, software description according to. And again, I see the contents of this template. Uh, it's about software, what software will develop, and then, you know, what are they take the users and so on. And I can uh, continue as I would normally do with uh, completing it. And at the end, what I would have, let me. Uh, was let me stop share and show you the download of the export. Um, okay. 
Okay, so there's screen again. Right. And then at the end, now I, I downloaded something that I haven't uh, filled in the, the information. Well, I filled in some of the information, I guess, in the funder, the grant, the research, the organizations. I can see the data set descriptions. I can see as I would normally see. And then I can see the software, uh, the software section with the descriptions for the software. And this is basically how uh, it works. Um, any questions? Uh, how do you find it? I think now we can open it for uh, discussion. And we're happy to know your thoughts. Because again, this was designed because um, based on your, your uh, requests and demands. And we're happy to know how you find it before we launch it officially maybe there are things for us you know there's always an opportunity to grow so we are happy to take it thank you ali uh, okay uh, you can uh, raise your hand and uh, we can uh, give you the opportunity to speak um please uh, let us know what do you think The, the, oh, okay, Julia. Hi. Oh, Another no. Julia. Sorry, Julia Caldona. <laughs> Hi. I, I'm always here. <laughs> so nice to see you, girls. Um, so yeah, nice. I have a couple of questions actually. So I hope they are not too many. But as you know, Ali, we are trying to finalize our templates. So it's really interesting what you presented today. I think it's wonderful, wonderful job once again, and it will be really helpful for everybody. Um, yeah, I have um, a few questions. Uh, as I was saying, um, for the data set template that you inserted when uh, describing the data management, can we? Uh, would it be possible to insert more than one uh, template, like um, the institutional one, and I don't know, maybe some disciplinary ones, so the researcher can both choose to use the one that we designed, maybe, or the specific one for his topics. That's the first question. And the other one is um, if the um, uh, you showed us that the system fields are kind of grouped by major teams, like um, the general information licenses, uh, do they follow some sort of stand metadata schema, some standards um, for this grouping? Did you follow something? Or, um, I mean, do you group them, you inserted these information? Yes, thank you. Okay, first question. Uh, yes, you can, this uh, functionality remains the same. You can add as many, you can prepare, let's say, your, your blueprint with adding as many templates as uh, you want, disciplinary and um, generics. Um, I didn't do it. I, I chose to do that example for the software, for example, but you can do the same for different sections. This is up to you how you want to use it. Uh, and then uh, for the um, last question, uh, which was about the oops, let me go here about the grouping. Oh, but you cannot see now. Okay, it's fine. Uh, about the grouping. So uh, the grouping you can do, uh, you know, as you want. Uh, to uh, uh, this is what the researchers will see. Uh, at the end, right? Um, but we don't follow that. We have some required uh, fields that maybe we could, hearing your comment, we could maybe um, make explicit that some of those are required because uh, they should be always there, like the title, the description, because uh, these are exactly the, the mandatory metadata fields. Uh, and I'll take a note uh, on that to see how we can do that. Uh, but you can group them as you want, basically. You can add the license uh, with all the other. You can have a metadata uh, information, DMP metadata information as a, a section for itself without uh, dividing them. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the idea. But thank you. I, we, we, we should see how we make more prominent, which are uh, required. Thank you. 
I have just one last question because probably maybe I missed it. But when we are designing a data set template, we have this basic structure, which is, um, if I'm not wrong, chapter, section, and then question, which is mandatory. Otherwise, we can't move on. Is there something similar uh, for this part of the blueprint or we can just add one section as we were saying? Okay. No, no, it's, you know, it's two different editors that say that the data set um, or the description editor uh, you can use as you used to. Mm -hmm. And then you can, once you've finished with the that editor, which is about the content, you can go and see how you want to structure uh, the, the, the blueprint itself. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Joachim, hi. Nice to see you. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was late to the table today, so, so maybe I missed something, but it's very good to be here again. Um, I, I just wonder, when you were talking about the system fields and the extra fields, uh, could you make some of those uh, repeatable? I mean, like uh, researchers or... or organizations, for example? So th those, uh, the, um, the system fields are those that uh, correspond to the metadata. So they uh, can only be used once, but if you want to have another field, which is for researchers, for example, you can add it as an extra field. Extra fields can be used several times and give them the title of researchers, for example, if you want to reuse something uh, in that way. Um, in the future, we're going to have, you know, not only free text options uh, as an extra field, but also APIs uh, there to select. But at the moment, we, we, we don't have that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I see one question uh, in the chat from Caroline. Uh, hi, I have a question. Hi. Uh, I don't know if you already mentioned this, but does the system automatically alert me when there is a discrepancy example since it has been collected process, but there is no consent form uploaded? Um, no, uh, that that's outside of the blueprint uh, discussion, but thank you. Thank you very much for sharing it. Uh, you're talking about notif notifications sent, um, to you as, uh, with what role? What is your role, for example? Are you the DMP author, the, uh, the, the data, um, the curator of the DMP, the librarian or the data steward? Okay, okay, as a data steward. Um, no, uh, at the moment, uh, you're not notified about this. Um, but stay tuned for 2024, because in April, Things are changing uh, dramatically on that aspect. <laughs> there are notifications, but correct. Yes, that is the yes. Thank you. Um, Overall, uh, again, do you think it it solves uh, the issue of you know being being able to have more flexibility and skipping the funder if this is uh, this DMP is created for a different case uh, or even a training maybe a training activity uh, where you need nothing just a, a plain uh, field uh, or um, also for things that are not DMP specific only, because again, we we see that the landscape changes. Uh, not only data sets are now, although data set templates exist, but software uh, templates, and there are questions also, and um, uh, things happening around other outputs, templates, and so on. So do you think that that helps? Oh, I see a question in the chat. Uh, hi, David. Uh, David asks, can Argos be used also for transnational access programs? Um, there is no um, 
there's no, let's say, limitation uh, for what you want to use Arcus. If it has the templates that you want, or even if it doesn't, we can create them. We can work together to create them. Uh, and if it works as you would like to, uh, of course, you can use it. Yeah. Okay, Julia, uh, there is also a question from the third document. Uh, thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, happy to work with you uh, on that further. Uh, quick question from the third. Great. We can construct a blueprint by reusing bits and pieces. Nice. Suggestion, introduce some info by hovering over the various bits one can choose so we have an idea of what is used. Introduce some info by hovering over the various okay, bits. Uh, so um, I'm not sure. Um, Maybe I'm Paulette, right. uh, if uh, you want to speak. Thank uh, you, though, for the, um, for the suggestion. But yes, it would help if you could explain a bit more. Ah, oh, okay. she's a African. No, no problem. Um, if you can add on the document just a few lines of uh, where exactly you think this is, this is about the sections, where is this about? Okay. Um, that is sort of a circuit to give an overview of what the bits consist of when you choose them. Ah, okay, an overview. Okay, yes, I see what you mean. Okay, oh, uh, that's noted. Thank you. Um, anyone else? What are your thoughts? Um, do you think you will it it solves like um those issues? Yes, Teresa. Hi. Um, nice to see you. Um, can you hear me? Yes, okay. but not that well, I think. Well, thank you. Um, I that might be a bit off topic, but I presume that might also offer an option to add funders that are rare, small organizations. Um, I think. Um, Sorry, you can't hear me. I I have troubles hearing. I don't know why. Okay. Teresa, maybe you can uh, uh, type on the notes, or maybe it's uh, it sounds from me that uh, there are workers, and probably try to speak again. Oh, it was only me because Dita um, could hear you. Could can hear you please her. try again? Hmm, can you please try again? Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. Sorry. Oh, Teresa, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can. Do you want to try again? Maybe we, maybe we can hear because some people heard you. So maybe it was me. Ah, okay. Could you use this? Thank you for adding that in the chat. Also, could you use this feature to add funders that are rare, such as small private organizations? Yes, you can for sure do that because you are right. Uh, uh, at the moment, Argos uh, has a, a certain collection of funders, and these are. Um, funders that we also work in open air so we have let's say their um, uh, their data because they have monitoring dashboards and so on um, and yes so that way you can uh, you can use it to add more more funders here yes for sure thank you and i like this see uh, you find more you know uh, more uh, cases where you want to how you want to use it that's 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 beautiful thank you um 
Any other question? Feedback? Something you would like uh, you know, more clarification on? No? Okay, then. Um, we have our next and final meeting uh, planned for December 13th. Uh, for obvious reasons, because after uh, the last uh, Wednesday of the month, is it's the one that we should spend with family, probably around the table, <laughs> uh, eating and drinking and having you know some good time. Um, yes, so we planned it for 13th of December. Uh, hope to see you all there. Uh, we will have more things to share. Uh, maybe a blueprint, uh, you know, an, an actual blueprint, a real case um, to be presented also. Um, thank you very much. And um, yeah, see you very soon in a few weeks. See you soon. And uh, if uh, you would like uh, us to tackle a specific uh, issue, please uh, feel free to contact us and suggest uh, some topics. Uh, so uh, don't be afraid. We are, it's a co-creation activity here and uh, the community call is uh, to involve you even more uh, in uh, our services. So thanks for participating today and see you soon. Always. Yes. Thank you, Julia. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.